Welcome to Renaissance Charge Videos. I'm Rick Friedrich and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of reforming your capacitors or forming them and why is that important? Well, <clears throat> a lot of the um, capacitors that have failed actually probably are still useful. Now these are electrolytic capacitors I'm going to be talking about today and I'm going to be referring you to two videos. I'm not going to go over all the information because you can watch those videos. <clears throat> They're the first videos that you find on Google when you do a search on the subject. So I will refer you to those, but I want to go over just a couple of points here. Um, just a little quick overview so that you can understand the relevance. So when you have a capacitor that blows up or that uh, again, electrolytic capacitor, such as we have here. Um, if it blows up, you have to uh, ask yourself why. And this is something that you want to avoid because it can be a big problem. So one of the reasons um, for this failure is because the battery, after it sits for... Um, over eight months or so unused then it needs to be reformed again so you need to apply a slow current to it to form this battery and this will make an even uh, positive charge on the plates so after a while they deplete and then they become irregular <clears throat> in that in some areas they're less form than others. So this creates heat at those points. It creates a rapid uh, discharging. And so this is uh, causing all sorts of problems and eventually can puncture the case as it gets hot and blows up. Now, if you don't know that you've and you do a bunch of experiments like I do, um, then you would experience this from time to time. But you'll even find this happen in your regular um, amplifiers or inverters or what have you. If you let them sit um, and then you go to turn them on and suddenly one of them blows up. You're just like, oh, well, that's a junky capacitor. It's old or whatever. But really, you actually have to reform it for the most part most of the time. Um, so my one of my examples was when I bought some really cheap Chinese um, ultra caps and I was you know running them and it wasn't even at the full voltage and it blew up <clears throat> and so I just assumed that it was um, cheap parts because you get that from most of the stuff from China <laughs> uh, when you buy it. Now, the thing about it was is they probably didn't form the battery or the fat, uh, form the capacitors properly, or they had sat for a while and I didn't, uh, I didn't form them, or reform them, and so then it experienced this problem. <clears throat> now, again, the one major. Um, problem besides complete self-destruction is a fast uh, um, discharge, not fast discharge, a um, yeah, a fast discharge when not uh, when sitting. So you have this capacitor charged up and then you let it sit and it will quite rapidly discharge itself so there's all sorts of problems that can happen and you'll get bad results from these capacitors thinking that they're useless um, when they just need to be reformed. So um, anybody who's tried to do rapid impulsing um, or just impulse in general um, in their experiments and hasn't used the capacitor in that period of time will have very poor results and they'll chalk it up to maybe their experiment. So um, 
many years ago when I first started doing um, the kind of switching that is called the Benitez process with the capacitors or um, the Tesla switch idea with capacitors where we're rapidly charging and discharging capacitors, I found that the capacitors that I had um, were not fast enough. But really, now I, th I realize that probably the capacitors that I had were not formed. So I think this affects to a lot of my listeners. I'm assuming that most of you don't know that. Um, if you're older and you were a hobbyist, you would know those things. Nowadays, we everything's kind of digital and we don't think about such things unless you are trained in these things you won't understand that or you won't think about it <clears throat> you just think you know over simplistically of the capacitor um, even batteries are a lot more complicated than people think um, with all their curves and charging and what have you um, so So what I want to do here is talk about um, these new capacitors, for example. So this is one of these red capacitors that I had in my video when I was using the SCR Pulsar. And I went to the company recently and I'll be selling these. And I talked to the president of the company for a good part of an hour. And um, he gave me some samples and we'll be looking at, you know, selling um, different sizes. I haven't decided that yet, uh, which ones, but this particular one is a 2000 microfarad, 500 volt, um, very low ESR capacitor. And I'm going to look at the data sheet on the, these are the um, strobe. He said that you would want the strobe kind for what you're doing with the SCR discharge um, circuit on the, the pulser. <coughs> so not the photo flash. So I've been using photo flash um, capacitors. He said the best ones you would want for that process would be these. Um, and again, these aren't actually, the strobe is like four times a second. So that's not terribly fast um, for the really high switching. You'd have to go to other capacitors to do that. Uh, but I'm talking about aluminum electrolytic capacitors here. So, um, yeah, I wanted to mention that, and then I'll go over here the um, the data sheet that I'll have in the link. And so um, these are the EA aluminum type, according to their data sheet. So on page 13, when you print this out, you get to this reconditioning aluminum electrolytic capacitors. This is the DC leakage current, that's what I was referring to, leakage current, of aluminum electrolytic capacitors at rated voltage may increase after extended storage, particularly at elevated temperatures. So this is very precise stuff here that you need to be familiar with when you're using, you know, any of these capacitors in a special stressful environment. To restore the leakage current to the minimal value as supplied by DuraCap International, proceed as follows. In an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, apply 110% of the rated DC working voltage, which in this case is 500. It's at the maximum surge is 550. So that would be, in this case, 550. Um, through a current limiting resistor to each capacitor separately. And um, 
some companies will sell or sell they will service capacitors for a fee um, doing this process here so this is how to do it yourself so you want to apply the, the 550 on this one volts with the current limiting resistor caution absolutely ensure correct polarity of your power supply connections this things have these things happen <laughs> so rated uh, WVDC current limiting resistance 10 watt so you have a resistor that's 10 watt um, I have one right here but I don't need to get it and so from 15 to 100 um, of the WVDC you have a thousand ohms and for a 101 to 250 10,000 ohms and then for for 251 to 450 you got 2,500 ohms 25,000 ohms so it's um, going to take a long time for that to fully charge up from completely discharged condition so preheating the capacitor before reconditioning to as high as 85 Celsius is recommended if cap capacitors have been stored at low temperature. So if you've got them out in the garage in the cold, you really want to get them, you know, basically they're trying to treat this capacitor evenly distributed. You're dealing with an unequal forming in the uh, plates or the um, electrolyte and now you're dealing with uneven temperatures um, you bring it in doors the outside of course is gets warmer faster than the inside so it will be completely uneven so you want to do this um, for a while okay reconditioning should take two to three hours when the voltage across each capacitor is about about five percent above the rated working voltage there should be considered they should be considered reconditioned discard parts that will not recondition after several hours now you can try um, discharging and charging them again this sometimes is necessary Proceed with caution. Shock hazard is directly proportional to applied voltage above 75 volts. Um, turn off power and short circuit the output terminals of the power supply. Also discard parts that show a ruptured pressure or vent. So there's a vent right here on the top. And if you see bulging you know, at the bottom or the top, Stay away. It's a little bomb. Uh, use a voltmeter to verify complete discharge of each capacitor before removing the parts from reconditioning circuit. Uh, since some heat may be generally internal, may be generated internally during reconditioning, the capacitors should be allowed to stabilize to 25C for at least eight hours before testing DC leakage current as outlined in the technical information bulletin so there are there's a lot more information before this section this is at the very end and so um, you need to pay attention to all those details so that's why it is important to look at data sheets <laughs> with any of these parts especially if you're doing some particular experiment where you want to try and prove out a point so I think, again, a lot of people have tried to use a capacitive pulsing arrangement and failed because there was high leakage current um, self-discharging um, going on and very slow response rates. So it's not just that electrolytic capacitors are slower than other capacitors at responding to rapid high frequency <clears throat> but they also can have this problem. 
Um, now, flipping over to batteries now, um, when you form a battery, when you make a battery with lead plates, for example, um, you have to do the same sort of process. So it's just straight DC over a period of time and it forms the battery in a positive way. So this goes along the lines with what we were talking about forming the negatively charged battery as opposed to positive. So it's the same lengthy process. <coughs> However, if you have formed a, a battery with positive, as what we're talking about with this process with straight DC, and then you've used that battery and charged it, it's become fully formed in a positive sense. And it's going to take, if you want to convert it to negative, um, you will have to um, charge it with the abrupt um, negative impulses, unidire unidirectional wave impulses as we call it, um, negative ones, so that it will form the battery negatively, but it will take some time to fully convert it from the positive to the negative. It's not as quick at doing that as forming the positive and vice versa. Once the battery has become negative, then it will take the same amount of time to reverse it to becoming positive. So as I've said in previous videos, when you are doing that um, and you don't realize it and you go to uh, discharge your negatively charged batteries and you charge them up on a regular constant current positive charger, then what you'll find is it just won't respond. It will just take a long time for that conversion to take place. Um, so that's something that I've talked about and it directly relates to what we're doing here. Although it's not exactly the same materials being used, of course. Um, so, yeah, that's what I just wanted to share real quick. And I think this is um, going to help a lot of people with their experiments and realize why many experiments have failed um, because they're not doing, they're not treating their parts the way the manufacturer instructs them to. So look up your data sheet of the capacitors that you have and use them appropriately <laughs> and safely. This is, um, can be a very dangerous process. Anyway, um, yeah, so these are some samples that I'll be working with um, to see which ones I want to make available. And um, I think even the little, I mean, obviously the little smaller um, models that even I sell need to be formed. Um, I have capacitors that are older, they're not brand new, and they you never know how long they've sat um, at the manufacturer's warehouse either. So even your little capacitors, you have to do that. And if you wonder why they blow up, now you know. <laughs> so thanks for watching. And we'll do probably another video. I did a four hour video I haven't uploaded because um, I'm kind of debating whether I should <laughs> share it. Um, but we'll, we'll see about that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.